Hi everyone, how are you guys doing? Are you doing all right? Well, I hope you are doing well, but if not, contact us either by phone or email. Let us help you through those struggles. This week, we are going to be covering lessons 17 through 20. So let's go ahead and get started. This week, you're going to need the lessons manual, the students' worksheets, the math card games manual, the abacus, the corners card, which looks like this, the basic card deck and the multiplication card deck and envelopes. Go ahead and turn to lesson 17. This week we're going to be working on numbers into the thousands as well as adding multi-digit numbers with carrying or trading as we talk about it in Right Start Math. In lesson 17, I want you to notice the warm-up section. Here, your child is going to be doing some skip counting of their multiples. Now, if your child does not know their multiples, just go ahead and have them use the abacus. Also, towards the bottom of the first page of this lesson, you will be using side two of the abacus. Let me show you how this is going to work. So since you will be using side two of the abacus, let me show you a little bit how it works. First of all, I want you to notice that under each place value, so here's the ones, you have two wires that you will be using. For the place value 10, you'll be using two wires. Place value 100, you'll be using two wires. And for the place value 1000, you will be using two wires. One thing that is um, important, that when you enter a quantity, you split that quantity into two. So if we, in this lesson, you are using two, you are not going to pull two up under one wire. You're going to pull them up evenly between the two wires. You're going to have two pull up in that wire. And this will be a very important concept. Uh, so you'll want to start training your child on that right now. Later on, it will be more clear as to why you're splitting it up between the two wires. But for today, um, just know that you just need to put those in two wires. So in this particular lesson, you're going to talk about comparing two twos two tens, two hundreds, and two thousands. And again, you'll want to make sure that you put, you split those quantities up in the two different columns. As you can see, we are going to be working on Roman numerals again today, and we are going to introduce them in the thousands. Take a look at the explanations on the top of page two of the explanations. It says this, the Romans used M for a thousand because they had the word millennium, which uh, starts with an M and means 1,000 years, just like C stands for century, which is 100 years. That might help your child learn to remember that M stands for thousand. Also, towards the middle of the second page, you're going to be introducing the later Roman numerals. And this is where you're going to introduce that four is represented by an IV and 10 is represented by an IX. Now, when I taught my children this, I used the chart that you will see in the explanation side. Um, I wrote that actually on my whiteboard. And then I also helped them understand that four um, is represented by five, BV, but with the I in front of it, meaning it's subtracting one from the five. So maybe something like that might help your child understand and remember how Roman numerals work, the fours and the nines. Your child will also build the number 3,544 on their abacus and then write that number on um, using early Roman numerals and then also later Roman numerals. Make sure your child splits those quantities on the two lines for each place value as shown in the lesson manual. Now, if your child struggles with this concept, don't worry about it. There is a comment in the explanation section at the bottom of the second page that says this. The late Roman numerals are introduced especially for the curious child who sees them in everyday life. Mastery is not expected. So take a deep breath. If your child does not master these, that's perfectly fine. They just need to have exposure to them to know how they work because they are around, especially when you're working on outlines later on or on clocks in various places. So they need to be familiar with them, but they don't need to have them mastered. Also, this, game, this lesson does not have a game. So you're going to want to pick a game to play. Um, you may want to play a game or two in the multiplication, from the multiplication chapter if your child was struggling with their multiplication math facts that were done in the warm-up. All right, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 18. 
This lesson is going to work on carrying or trading, as Right Start Math says, and how it works. This lesson is going to help your child understand that carrying the one is more than just a rule. They're actually going to see it moving at work. Um, in the warm-up section, your child is going to be doing a little bit of mental math, which is you're going to continue that through the next several lessons. If your child struggles with mental math, then you can make it a little easier for them by writing the problem on the board if necessary, or have their child use their abacus if necessary. Also, under the section called Trading Ones on side two, you are going to start teaching your child how to trade or carry using um, working on different problems. So let me work through a couple of problems for you. Okay, so the two examples that we're going to be looking at are the 28 plus six and the 49 plus seven. So let's start with 28 point, uh, plus six. The first step is to input the 28. Now remember, we are going to split that up into two columns. So our 20 or two tens is going to split up um, into the two columns look like that. And eight will be split up into four and four on our ones. So we have 28 here. We are going to add six to to that. So we're going to add six. Again, notice I'm splitting it up into two columns. Now here's the reason why we need to see, we need to split it up into two columns. You can see that you have a full 10 here very easily, can't you? So we know if we have 10 ones, that's the same as one 10. So we need to trade. Now we're going to trade 10 ones for one 10. And a quick way to know where to split up the beads is if I see how many blue beads I have down here, that's how many yellow beads I'm going to leave up here. So when I do this with my kids, I always play the game. Ready? On your mark, get set, trade. And now we have three tens and four ones. So 28 plus six is 34. The second problem that I will give as an example for is for the 49 plus seven. So again, 49, 40 will be split up into two columns and nine like that. And we're going to add to 49, seven more. So we're going to add seven beads. Now again, you can see that we have 10, which means we can trade. And I see I have six beads here, so I'm going to leave six, and I'm going to carry, or trade, <laughs> one. So ready, on your mark, get set, trade. 49 plus seven is 56. If your child is struggling to grasp this concept, you may want to create a few extra problems for them to solve. You'll want to have them do this until they are comfortable with trading. Now, on the second page, your child will be trading tens on the abacus. So let me give you a demonstration of that first problem so you can see how it works. The example I'm going to show you is 79 plus 60 as shown on the top of the second page of this lesson. So the first step is to input the first number, 79. So let's put that in. Again, split it up into two columns. Four and three is seven. And then nine. 79. And we're going to add to that 60. So we're going to add six tens to that. And just like the ones, we see that we have 10 tens, which means we get to trade. And we'll take a look at my blue beads and leave the, leave the reflection of that in the yellow beads. And I'm going to trade those 10 tens for one 100. On your mark, get set, trade. So 79 plus 60 is 139. At the end of lesson 18, your child is going to be playing corners. My daughter considered corners kind of like a rite of passage for Right Start Math. Uh, we do have a blog for this game. It's called Winter Games Corners. And this blog has both a video and a written blog with more details on how to play the game. The score keeping is one of the major learning opportunities for this game. You are going to see a sample score sheet in the middle of the lesson manual on the second page. 
um, when keeping score, your child is not going to want to write the equations out. For example, if they have 10 and they get five more, they're not going to write 10 plus five equals 15. Instead, they're going to write the score, the previous score 10. And if they get five more points, they're going to think 10 plus five equals 15. And then they're going to write the 15 down. They're going to do the calculations mentally. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 19. In this lesson, you're going to continue working with your child on adding uh, with carrying or trading. The purpose of these activities and using the abacus is really going to help your child understand the when and the how of trading. To be honest with you, after my, child, my children learned how to trade on the abacus doing this lesson and other lessons after, um, then when they worked on multi-digit problems on paper, um, they automatically knew when to carry their one. There was absolutely no extra instructions I needed to give them, nor did I need to give them any reminders. Um, or very rarely did I have to give them any reminders. Do not dismiss the importance of these activities. Now again, um, in this lesson, your child is going to be working on more mental math problems. And again, if needed, go ahead and write those problems on the board. Um, they can also use the abacus if they need to solve. Um, however, you wanna make sure that you stretch your child a little. Don't automatically write the problem up on the board or expect that they need to use the abacus for every single problem. See if they can work the problem on their own first and then start get, adding these extra little helps. Now on the bottom of the second page of the lesson, your child is going to be playing the game called Mental Edition Game. Um, we have a blog for this game. It's called 2017 Summer Game Number 18 mental addition. Um, in this lesson, it also says that you're going to need six of each basic number cards from one to nine, but you're also going to need the zeros as well. So make sure you have six of the zeros included in your um, decks, your playing deck. Now playing this game, Mental Edition, um, it will really help your child and stretch their thinking. Take a look at the explanations on the first page of the lesson. It says this, Research has shown that most people who need to add two-digit numbers do not reach for paper and pencil or a calculator, but they do it mentally. Um, if your child works through level B, they also learned how to add mentally. Most math standards today call for a greater emphasis on math, mental math computation. This card game will definitely help that mental computation skill. Also for this game, you're going to need the multiplication card deck. Um, because this is the first time you have used the cards, it might be helpful for you to take them out and put them in the correct envelopes. There is an explanation on the bottom of the second page of the lesson um, that tells you how to do that. But let me um, demonstrate it for you. So you'll want to pull out all of the envelopes. This is a sample envelope, but there should be 10. And the first number in on each envelope is the multiple. So this is for the multiple of two. So you can see two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And you're also going to want to go to the multiplication card deck um, that looks like this. They're the blue cards. And you're going to want to pull out all of the multiples of two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, is my four. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And then you're going to put them inside the envelope itself. And that way, when you're working on a particular multiple, all you have to do is pull out the envelope and you're ready to go play the game. You don't have to worry about sorting through cards. Also, in the conclusion of this lesson, you're going to do more mental math with carrying. Um, if you have a struggling learner in your home, mental math will be more difficult for them. And there are things that you can do to help your child. First of all, as I've mentioned before, you can write the problem on the board so they don't have to try to remember the problem while solving it at the same time. Um, you can also walk through the steps of solving the problem with them by asking them questions, not giving them the answers, um, but guide them on how to think on problems such as these. There is also a video on our YouTube channel called Tuesdays with Rachel Mental Double Digit Edition that you might find helpful in viewing before uh, these lessons are done. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 20. In this lesson, 
you are going to give your child several strategies on how to solve multi-digit addition problems. Um, you will find that your child will probably understand and gravitate toward one strategy over another, and that's great. Um, they can continue using that one strategy as they solve problems. They do not need to master all three strategies. So let's take a look at that first problem under problem one. It's 49 plus 23. Let me walk you through the three strategies so you're comfortable with them. So here you'll see the problem 49 plus 23. Here is strategy one. In strategy one, you're going to add the tens separate from the ones and then put the totals together. So we're going to look at Instead of 49, we're going to add just 40. Instead of 23, we're going to add the 20. So 40 plus 20 is 60. Then you're going to add the ones together. Nine plus three is 12. Then you're going to add the totals together. 60 plus 12 is 72. And that's basically how strategy one works. Strategy two, strategy two is uh, my family's favorite, actually. Um, you're going to keep one of the ones place and then drop the other one. So we're going to start with 49 and we're going to add 249 20. We're going to drop that three. So 49 plus 20 is 69, but then we need to add that three back in. So 69 plus three is 72. Strategy three, um, if you'll notice, 49 is really close to what number? 50, right? So we're going to go ahead and round that on up to 50. So 50 plus, and again, we're going to only add the tens, 50 plus 20 is 70. But we have to do something special with the ones place. Because we needed an extra one for the 49, we need to take that one away from the three. So three minus one is equal to two. So our final answer, our final equation is 70 plus two will equal 72. Now, in the middle of the second page of the lesson, you're going to be given a second problem to solve using the same three strategies. Let me again show you how they work so that you're more comfortable with it. So this problem is 87 plus 39. Remember in strategy one, we are only going to add the tens first, then the ones place, and then we're going to put them together. So we're gonna start with 80 plus 30, which gives us 110. We're going to add our ones place together, which is seven plus nine, which is 16. And now we're going to add those totals together. 110 plus 16 is going to equal 126. In strategy two, we are going to keep one of the ones place and get rid of the other ones place. So we're going to get rid of the seven in this particular version. So we're going to add 80 plus 39, which gives us 119. But we have to add that seven back in. So we're going to take that 119, add seven to it, and we're going to end up with 126. Now your question might be, why did we decide to get rid of the seven and keep the nine initially? Well, most people find it easier to add a lower number than the higher number later. So I typically keep the higher number and then add the lower number later, but it would work either way. The third strategy is, to take this number 39 and round it up to 40, because that's really close to 40, right? So we're going to add, again, the tens only, 80 plus 40 equals 120. But again, because we rounded this up, we have to reduce that seven. So we're going to have seven minus one equals six. Now we're going to add those two numbers together, 120 plus six equals 126. Lesson 20 will finish by having your child work through worksheet five, independently if possible. If not, help your child think through each problem using the strategy or strategies that they were most comfortable with. Now, if you find that this worksheet is extremely hard for your child, you may wanna do a part of that worksheet one day and then finish that worksheet another day or maybe later on in the day. All right, well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns as you work through the lessons at all, email or call us for help. We are here to help you. Have a great week. I look forward to seeing you next week when we work through lessons 21 through 24. Bye, everybody.